Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and this is video 21 for Research Tools. And this uh, video will cover Introduction to Fink Packaging on the Mac. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I've got a terminal open here. And today we're going to go through setting up and installing software through the Fink Package Manager. There's also Mac ports and Homebrew that are available. And while uh, those are probably pretty good tools, I tend to spend my time in Fink as I'm a Fink developer. So you, uh, you can take that as my bias. So let's go ahead and take a look at our Mac. Um, if we do uname-a, we are actually in um, Mac OS 10.7, otherwise known as Lion. So this may be different if you're on 10.8 in the future, and it's also definitely different for 10.6. All right, so first let's open up the Fink Packaging Manager uh, website. So HTTP colon slash slash www.finkproject.org. You can also just open the browser and do the same thing. This is just the command line way of opening up the web page for it. And if we take a look here, and I shrink it down so it fits in the window. There's actually, uh, right now, you have to use a source release to install Fink. There isn't a PKG or DMG type install. Unfortunately, we're not able to keep up with that kind of thing. So click source release. Unfortunately, right now, the URL is broken for that. It's actually, we go in here and say download slash. All right, so what we're going to first do is download Fink from SourceForge and of course there's some advertising to help support the download process and mirroring this all around the globe. So we'll go ahead and save the file and it's now saved for us. Close Firefox and go back and we're in my home directory, you should be in yours. So you can, the first thing to do is take a look at what's in any tar that you play with uh, before you just open it up and dump stuff all over your disk, which might not necessarily be in the greatest order. So tar tf tilde slash download think. And so that the t is for a list. Unfortunately, t doesn't really have a good mnemonic. And if we take a look, there is everything that will untar as it goes through. And if we do an x, it will extract everything into our local directory. If we cd into fink, and in there we will actually um, take a quick look around, and the setup process starts off with a script called bootstrap, so less bootstrap, and it's a Perl script that will set up the world for us. So let's go ahead and run bootstrap. Now, unless you are a fink developer, all of the defaults work pretty well right now. So I'm going to go through and do those, but I'll tell you what I'm doing as I do them. You can just hit enter, or you can actually type in the number if you want to change it. So here, the default, as shown right there, is 1. And we're going to go ahead and use that default for sudo, or sudo. Press enter. That will default pick sudo. And we want to install the software in slash sw. Please do not install this in slash user local or anything like that. Those places tend to cause trouble, and I recommend in general just not putting anything in user local. Some software will pick that up automatically and cause problems. So slash sw is the standard way to do this. I hit enter for the default. It told us a bunch of stuff that we're going to ignore. And for where tars to look where to look for tarballs and things like that, whether to be installed, just press enter. Which directory to build it in, press enter. Uh, how verbose or how talkative Fink will be while it's building stuff. We're not too worried about that, so we'll just pick the low, the 2 is default. If you need to set up proxies and firewall settings, I leave that up to you. I have never actually had to do that. So press enter, press enter. Uh, yep, for passive FTP, that works great. Now, right now we're on the number of simultaneous jobs, and what that does is say how many programs at the same time can be or files inside of a program can be built at the same time. So these are for parallel builds. On my MacBook Air, there are um, basically what looks like four cores. 
It doesn't actually have four cores, but that's how it appears to the system. And so four is a decent default, so I'll press enter. If you have a bigger machine, you can type in more. If you know the number is different, you can pick something different. And now we're in the mirror selection. And a mirror is a location that Fink can find software. And there's lots of different mirrors that Fink's u Fink uses based on which set of software it's looking at. Some tools have their own sets of mirrors. We're going to stick with all of the defaults. So here we're going to search the master source list first. Yep, that looks good. Uh, hopefully it'll pick your continent correctly. Here it's defaulting to North America for me. So North America, and that's fine. And I do happen to be in the United States, so this looks good right here. And um, choose the mirror for Fink Master. Yep, we want the primary. And yep, we don't actually have an apt-get repository, unfortunately. And we're going to go through all the mirrors and just pick the defaults for each of these guys. GNOME, GIMP, uh, Tech and LaTeX, Perl, Debian, FreeBSD, KDE, SourceForge, Apache, etc. So once it's gone ahead and done that, what Fink will do is download all of the software that it needs inside of itself to keep and manage software. And Fink is built on the .deb style of packaging or deb and that comes from the Debian software project Debian Linux and it's been around for many many years this is also the same system that's used in Ubuntu uh, to contrast with that some other systems might use like the RPM the Red Hat package manager uh, to manage software to allow you to install update and remove software uh, Deb works pretty darn well for Fink it lets you very nicely install software um, and once it's installed, you can remove it. And what's going on here is uh, it's downloaded a lot of software, and now it is actually going through the compilation process for those core programs. And it takes a few minutes to do all of that. Uh, I would estimate it's sort of on the 10 to 15 minute time period, depending on what's going on. Um, you will get a choice after it's built the first bit of, of Fink. And no, we don't want to change the mirrors right now. So we'll just hit enter, which is the default for N right here. And it's going to go off and build lots of stuff. So it's running autoconf, which is the configuration system. And then it will then run through and run the C compiler for all of this code, which is GCC. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and suspend this and let it come back. We'll come back to it when it's done. And so hopefully this will work. So we can say. Stop cap. Okay, so now the computer has gone ahead and finished building all of that software, and it keeps going and going until it finishes, and it actually shows you a lot of the commands that it's been running. For example, here it's building up the Debian packages, and when it's done, it goes through and scans all of the new packages that it's built, etc., etc. It tells us that the bootstrapping is done. And now you should have a working fink in slash a w slash sw according to this. And if all went well, you would expect that you should just be able to type fink and the package manager would be running. Unfortunately, that's not quite what goes on. And in fact, it gives us a hint right in this paragraph here that we actually have some more work to do. And let's see. So what we need to do first is take a look at our path and see how it's set up. So if we say type fink, the same thing, uh, type is a command that actually lets us search our path for a particular program. Nothing's there. If we say echo dollar path, this is for the bash shell on the Mac. And our path doesn't include anything to do with slash sw. In here, I don't see anything with slash sw. So the first thing we need to do is we need to run slash sw slash bin slash path setup dot sh and this is a program that will hopefully automatically set up our environment to work for us with Fink. If we press enter we get a nice little pop-up saying yes or no and it tells you a little bit about what it's going to do. It's going to modify a file called your dot profile and in your that'll be in your home directory and it's going to add this line described right here and go ahead and hit yes. Uh, it goes pretty quick. We hit OK. 
and it says OK. So now if we type Fink, press Enter, still nothing. Unfortunately, what it does is it creates that file, but it's not actually set up for this terminal. So we can say ls-l for long listing, t for sort by time, r for reverse, a to include the dot files, tilde slash, and tail dash two for lasting the list two. And in your home directory, you'll find a dot profile file to take a look at. So we'll say less tilde slash dot profile, press enter. And we'll see that just like it described, there's this little test-r where it actually runs swbin and it.sh. Okay, Q to quit out of less. And if we say source tilde slash dot profile, what this will do is actually bring it into our current environment. So now if we type uh, type space fink and we now have it in our path. If we type fink, pipe less, we'll see that here's the fink command and it's got all of the common commands listed. Install, remove, purge, update, etc, etc. That's looking pretty good. We can say fink dash dash version. This is important if you run into a bug and you're trying to report it to somebody. So here we can see that we're using fink 0.31.6. And from there, we can say fink list pipe head, since there's a lot of programs available. And you can see, for example, here is a listing of a few files, or sorry, packages that are available inside of fink right now. The left-hand column here is the status of the package. So dash, so just an I in there means that it's installed. A P package is a virtual package, meaning that Fink is just keeping track of something that's already on the system for another reason, usually from Apple. And um, one thing in here is um, that if there's nothing, it's not installed. So here we have some reference to a broken GCC. And before I forget, I missed one thing earlier. and the Mac doesn't come with compilers by default. If you open up the App Store on the bottom on your dock, as I'm doing here, um, you need to install something called Xcode. And if you search in here for Xcode, you'll see here uh, on the top left that I have Xcode installed. And this actually is what uh, puts the GCC compiler on your computer that Fink is going to use to compile software. Uh, it used to cost $5. I'm not sure if it's free or costs right now. Hopefully it's free. Okay, so we'll continue on with the listing. So if we say fink list pipe wc, which is word count, not water closet. And this will tell us the number of packages that it has in its current list. So 315. That might seem like a lot, but it's actually not as many as we'd like. Fink list dash i. This is going to be slightly different. The dash i here says only list the installed packages. So fink list dash wc. Okay, so we have 298 packages that are actually installed right now, and we'd like to get more. So the first thing that we need to do when you get fink going is you need to do a self update. So we downloaded that tar, and that kind of got our world set up. But with fink, there's constantly being packages added, updated and improved and occasionally shuffled around things like that as the packagers work on getting their software fine-tuned and if you run a self to update periodically that will bring in uh, the updates the first time we run it, it's actually going to set up your environment a little bit more so if we press enter uh, the first thing is is that the self update method the old style was to use the concurrent version system or CVS to grab your packaging information. This is what the developers inside of Fink like me have to use so that we can actually modify and push the changes back up. It's pretty slow. You don't want to use it. If you do two stick to point releases, you're not going to have a whole lot of stuff available. But if you use three rsync, it's a fairly effective and quick way to keep pulling your updates. And so it's going to remember this. So the default is three for rsync right here. We definitely want to use that. So press enter. And what it's going off right now and doing is it's rsyncing, and here's the command right in here, and it's going and grabbing 
all the updates for Fink packages that need to be applied to our current setup. It's downloading some additional mirrors, it's doing a bunch of work for us, and it's actually seen that there's some critical core software that needs to get updated and recompiled. Self-update will only recompile the core parts of Fink. There's a command that we'll see later on called update-all that will actually handle updating any other software, all the extra programs that you've installed, and the self-update process is meant just to handle the core packages. So it goes fairly quick as it loads through things. Now while it's doing that, I just wanted to let you know a little bit about Fink in general right now. On 10.7 with Lion, everything that you see here is being built in the 64-bit mode as opposed to the in 10.6, which I believe is Snow Leopard, uh, you had the option of building Fink as 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, with 10.7, the Mac is going just towards having everything be 64-bit. And there's no longer support for PowerPC, so if you have one of those old Macs, it's time to upgrade to something newer with the Intel processors. So you want to make sure that you're not thinking about 10.6 and older stuff like that if you're worried about 32-bit stuff. So just stick, think 64-bit and Intel only, and that will be our world for packaging on the Mac. And it looks like we're getting close to being done with this self-update. It's working through the install process of the dpackage program, which is the Debian tools. going 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 and while it's doing that we can see up here that I'm running a little tool called menu meters that's actually giving us a listing of how hard the computer's working which is fairly hard right now it's just off screen from you but uh, it shows you the load average and various things like that and then it has a nice little graph and so it's now finishing up that package and in this occasionally it's going to ask you things like the possible mirrors list has been updated so maybe we need to go through this uh, right now we're going to say no so the default is n we'll hit enter and it's now updated the dpackage program in Fink mirrors so now let's see what we've got in terms of available packages so Fink list pipe word count dash l and lo and behold, hopefully we'll see soon that we have 4,000 plus packages, whereas before we only had several hundred. This means Fink has gone out and gotten the latest package updates from when this particular release started that we downloaded as a tar. We're now up to the latest and greatest with lots more software. That's great. Um, now we want to think about installing some software and the first program that you might want to do into if you're a GIS type person is something is called proj and we want to find out about this proj program so think list will list everything but we can say proj or you can write any string here that's just a block of characters and it will find all packages that name contains that so press enter and we get a whole bunch of stuff back that contains proj some of it is what we want and some is not necessarily what we want. So in here, Fink has proj, proj-bin, and proj-shlibs, which are the shared libraries, and it also has some other things that are somewhat similar. So if we say Fink describe proj, this will tell us about the proj package. And we can see here it's got a little description of it. Um, it goes on down through here. It tells you who the maintainer is, which happens to be me, and you know any notes that go along with this. Now, uh, what we actually want to install is if it's got three different names, the shared libraries will come along if we need them. The this part up here with just proj is the compile time stuff. If you see a dash bin, that means that the command line programs that you might use are going to be in that package. So we want to fink install proj-bin, press enter. And what fink is going to do is go off and look at what programs are required to get proj installed. And in this case I pick proj because it's fairly simple and doesn't have a lot of other dependencies, so we, it'll go pretty quick. 
And if you want to have the proj programs around, you need to have the shared library. So it's going to find that and say, we're also going to install that. So we'll hit enter for yes to continue. It's going to go off and download the source code for proj. It's going to run the configure stuff that needs to get done. It does this all behind the scenes for you, so you don't have to know them, but you could look it up if you want. And proj should hopefully build in a, just a minute or so here. It goes fairly quick. Proj is pretty small. And it's cranking away, running GCC as fast as it can. You can see that my CPU load is shooting way up as it works hard. Should just be another 30 or 40 seconds. You can see it's cranking along. Getting close, it looks like it's building the shared libraries. And it's done. So now if we say type dash a proj, we now have a proj program uh, installed on our system. So we can say man proj and hopefully there's a man page for it talking about projections. That's great. We can also do um, dpackage is a tool that's behind the scenes in Fink. We can do dash l proj dash bin and what this will do is list all of the files inside of the proj package. And there's not a huge amount here, but it tells you everything that's in there. So you can see there's a bunch of different programs in bin. And you can go read about those if you're interested in using those. And it tells us there's some man pages and there's some documentation running around. So that's a pretty helpful uh, utility inside of dpackage. I use that fairly often when trying to figure out new packages that I'm not familiar with. Okay, so that's the basics of installing some software. And if you say fink list mb system gmt, there's lots of different software in here that you might want to install. This will actually take you quite a long time to compile all of this. It might be an, an hour or two of compiling. So it's something that you should just do and put it in the background or go off, have a coffee and come back when it's done or get it running when you go to sleep and wake up in the morning and see how far it's made it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and go into my root directory and take a look for uh, fink, which is actually slash sw, and I have a package set up that's my normal working one, the one I was just working with slash sw, we just set up, and it doesn't have a whole lot of stuff. So I'm going to have, have you take a quick look at mine. So move sw, sw off. Oops, I need a sudo. I'll do it as root. Okay, so sudo mv sw orig to sw. And that's now moved my uh, package setup that I've got that I typically use. So if we say fink list mb system, you'll see that I actually have mb system installed uh, from a while back. And inside of this, we can actually do uh, a fink self update again. And this will go ahead and go back out to the server and see if there's any updates that I need. And so you'll see that I'm actually using the CVS one, so you won't see the rsync tool uh, run, but it looks fairly similar. It's a little more details here, so you'll see it go off and do the CVS style updating, and it's it can be slow and get stuck sometimes. And I have a few things that are modified where I've been working on them. Um, and there weren't any updates in this one, but there's another command I want to show you that will list if there's anything that's out of date. So fink list dash o press enter, and we can actually see that uh, if there's parentheses around the i for installed, it means that there's a newer version available and you have an older version installed on your system. So the obspy core-py, which is a Python 2.7 library, is actually out of date, and I could say fink update-all, and that would actually go out there grab all the source and install anything needed to do to get my system up to date. Okay, and 
One last Fink command I'm going to show you in this lesson is a handy one to recover some of your disk space, so Fink cleanup. And what that's going to do is go back into the system and see if I've updated the software, I don't need the old version. It's going to go and get rid of old packages that are obsolete and get the system a little bit more compact. So that definitely helps retrieve some of that disk space that might be being eaten up by your older versions of software that have been archived in case you might need to install them again at some other time. Okay, and that's it for the introduction to the command line for Fink. I'm going to show you some web searching stuff that will help you sort of look around in terms of the web and do some queries in a different way. And we'll, so we'll go ahead and open up a web page. So open HTTP colon slash slash PDB, which is a database of Fink packages. Thinkproject.org slash pdb. So here we are in Firefox. And you can browse by general categories. So you could click on science. That might be one of my more favorite categories. And in here you can type in some text to go to search in there. You can search on a package or name. Um, more likely though, you want to search for anything say in 10.7 macOS and then rerun your search. So right now we're looking at uh, 11, 1185 science packages. So if we say search, 10.7 is still fairly new right now, so there should be fewer. And there's 593 packages. So that uh, will give you everything that, that's currently available for 10.7. If I do a control F or sorry an Apple F on the Mac and I type in MB system we'll see that there's an MB system in here click on that and you'll see a little summary table that shows you the versions available for uh, stable and unstable now one thing to point out is that with prior versions of Fink there was both a stable and unstable tree. Unstable meaning not necessarily that it doesn't run well, and that just that it's changing more often. And with 10.7, the developers of Fink decided as a whole that it's just better to keep things in stable for a while and make all the changes there because really we're just getting going on 10.7. And the split between stable and unstable meant that stable just meant old and not updated in a long time for anything in 10.6 and older. And you can notice that uh, you'll find that I tend to not worry as much about updating the older software. So in 10.7, we have a newer version of MB system than I've got in 10.6 and older. So I apologize for that, but there's uh, not enough time in the day to keep everything up to date. And I encourage you to watch the follow on lectures where hopefully I'll show you how to do a little packaging work yourself and if you want to update say MB system to the newer version you can actually do it yourself and I'll show you how to do that cleanly without causing any troubles. Alright thank you for joining me and that's Fink.